Hello and welcome to Woodforest Bank Stadium for tonight's District 13-6A battle between Conroe High and Grand Oaks. The Conroe Tigers made a winning start to district in a thrilling 44-41 victory against Oak Ridge last week. I was on the call at Moorhead and it was an absolute feast for the eyes and a pleasure to call that game. So Conroe off to a flying winning start and they'll look to continue that here tonight. On the other side, Grand Oaks faced defending district champions College Park in their very first district game and fell by a score of 21 to 35 in that one. Uh, Zachary, you were here to see that one. How was it and what was your overall impression of Grand Oaks? Yeah, I mean, it was a great game. Definitely being able to see Grand Oaks' strength coming into the season. Uh, you know, for them today, it's really about getting back on track. They started off non-district perfect. Hadn't lost a game coming in and then, like you said, losing to the district champs. So now they're really just looking to get back on track, let's get in the win column, and continue on with the season. And, of course, Zachary, I called a game that was just full of offense in that 44-41 game I just mentioned last week between Conroe and Oak Ridge. We could see points here again tonight having two of the best offenses in the district. I'm not sure if it'll be quite on the order of a 44-41 to sort of game, but I'm looking forward to seeing – Kind of what this matchup of contrasting styles brings us tonight. Conroe and their high-powered passing attack, led by quarterback Garlock, who's leading the district comfortably in passing. And Grand Oaks, of course, known for their ground attack and at the top of most of the statistics in the district in that category. In fact, in terms of total offense and all-purpose yards, we have half of the district leaders um, in the individual sense represented in this game here tonight. So again, could be fireworks out here. We can't wait to bring you this game and hope you'll join us here as we get closer to kickoff. We're a little over 26 minutes away and we'll come back to you here closer to kick while we run some district uh, videos. We'll see you back here shortly. I'm Jeremy McGrail with Zachary Berger here at Wood Forest Bank Stadium tonight with you for this district game. Should an emergency occur, instructions will be provided through public address system. Public safety personnel dispersed through the stadium may also provide instructions to fans. It is important for people to remain calm and follow through the instructions. If there is a total loss of power, please stay seated and school district staff will provide further directions. Under special circumstances for safety purposes, fans may be required to evacuate the stadium. Should this occur, please follow the directions provided through the public address system and leave in a calm, orderly fashion through the nearest gate. Should a weather event develop, information and warnings will be provided through the stadium public address system. After an event would cause you to leave the stadium, you would be readmitted to the stadium once it's safe. To report a public safety issue, please inform a CISD police officer or school official. Lastly, please remember, if you see something, say something. 
Good evening, football fans, and welcome to tonight's game. This game is being conducted according to the rules and regulations of the UIL. Regardless of the outcome of tonight's game, all of the players and students have proven their willingness to work and sacrifice in order to achieve excellence. We also ask that as a spectator, you consider the time and effort each of these teams, coaches, trainers, cheerleaders, dancers, and musicians have put forth. Cheer them on, applaud them, but do not, through any of your actions, cause them to doubt the value of their hard work. By your conduct, allow these young people to feel pride in their communities and schools. While your sportsmanlike actions may play only a small part in the outcome of this game, it will play a greater role in continuing to encourage competitive athletics. The game officials have been mutually agreed upon by school officials from both schools. Their role is not unlike any of those players, coaches, teachers, and school administrators. Without them, this game would not be possible. Their knowledge and application of the rules are a result of annual testing, years of study, and continual participation in clinics that further refine their understanding of the game. We ask you, as students, parents, and citizens, to demonstrate the kind of respect for these officials you would extend to any dedicated person in a position of responsibility. Enjoy the game! Looking to make a difference in the lives of Connor ISD students? Each day, CISD transports approximately 35,000 students from home to school and back again. CISD also transports thousands of more students to field trips, athletic events, and academic competitions. Become a bus driver today and make a positive impact in your community by being the first and last face a child sees each day. Apply today at ConroeISD.net. Junior 
You've got a lot going on, so how do you find time to take care of you? At Houston Methodist, we work around your busy life. There's same day visits when you're sick, online scheduling with specialists, access to all your records through my chart, and video visits 24 seven if you need urgent care. Bringing you Houston Methodist's expertise, wherever, whenever you need it. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Shopping for a new or used vehicle? Or just looking for a place for good, reliable service? Go with the name you know. Gallo Ford, Gallo Mazda, and Gallo Toyota. The Gallo family has been serving the Conroe Woodlands area since 1970. So the next time you're shopping for a new or used vehicle or just need service, do yourself a favor and go see Gallo Toyota, Gallo Mazda, and Gallo Ford. Or log on anytime at galloauto.com. Gallo, let's drive. It's not enough to be the leader in robotic-assisted procedures if we're not by your side for every step of your recovery, guiding you back to what makes you, you. Because it's not enough to replace your knee if we're not getting you to the moments that can't be replaced. Memorial Hermann, advancing health, personalizing care. For over 40 years, Wood Forest National Bank has proudly supported the youth and schools of this great community. Our bank has grown through the years, and Montgomery County is our home. With over 30 convenient branch locations right here in Montgomery County, we are your community bank. Next time you're in the area, stop by and say hi. But for now, sit back and enjoy the game. Hi, it's Donnie Buckaloo from Buckaloo Chevrolet, home of the Better Buy. Buckaloo Chevrolet is here to help you with all your transportation needs. Your experience can be touchless. You can do your paperwork at home instead of coming to our dealership. Plus, we'd be happy to deliver your vehicle to you. And remember, at Buckaloo Chevrolet, our prices are real. We only advertise rebates you qualify for. Visit us in Conroe or shop BuckalooChevrolet.com. See you soon. It's a better buy at Buckaloo. And welcome back to Wood Forest Bank Stadium here for this district game between the Conroe High Tigers and Grand Oaks Grizzlies. Teams are out on the field and ready to run through the tunnels. In fact, Conroe Tigers running out now. Grand Oaks will follow here shortly. We'll have the national anthem and kick off in a little over five minutes. Should be a very exciting District 13 6A encounter here tonight between two of the most explosive offenses in the district. Last year's game finished 19 to 18 in Grand Oaks' favor. I think we will probably see more points here tonight if the matchup plays out the way it looks on paper. But of course, once that ball goes up, anything can happen. 
and we look forward to bringing you the action here tonight on this Conroe ISD live stream. I'm Jeremy McGrail, and I'll be joined tonight by Zachary Berger, and again, we'll have kickoff in a little over four and a half minutes. Grand Oaks about to make their way out now. The American flag in tow out in front of the team here. Always a great look. Texas flag as well. Grand Oaks, of course, looking to get into the winning column after taking a loss to the defending district champion College Park Cavaliers in their opening game last week. Of course, they have it all to play here for tonight so they can avoid going into that 0-2 hole. Grand Oaks can make sure they, they put themselves right in the middle of the playoff conversation if they can take care of business here tonight. But again, Conroe, a formidable, formidable opponent to start that task against here tonight. And again, we'll have kickoff here in a little over four minutes. Yeah, I mean, two very, very different teams with very different play styles all coming in for one goal to win another district ball game. Conroe is very pass-heavy offense, while Grand Oaks is very pound into the ground with their run game. Like you said, Conroe just trying to get more momentum, go 2-0, and and Grand Oaks trying to pick it up and get into the win column for the first time. Very exciting matchup. It's going to be an exciting game tonight. Absolutely. We'll have the national anthem here, and then we will come back for the opening kick. And with the National Anthem, we are ready to kick the ball off here tonight. The officials are making their way out to midfield, along with the captain representatives from both teams. This will be my third look at both Conroe and Grand Oaks so far this season. Again, I called that epic Conroe-Oak Ridge game last week, and I also called their first game of the year against Katie Maid Creek High School. And for Grand Oaks, I was on the call for their game against South Houston and then again the following week against Houston Chavez. Really looking forward to seeing how the Grizzlies do here in what should be a tightly contested district encounter. And the lead official has the captains out now at midfield. He'll go back through the toss. I'll admit I kind of spied on them pregame down under the goalpost near the field house and Grand Oaks seemed to signal that they were getting the ball first, but we'll confirm that here.
Yeah, it does look like as the teams come out into the field, Grand Oaks will be kicking off to Conroe. Conroe won the toss and elected to receive, so Grand Oaks will be getting the ball in the second half. And kicking off for Grand Oaks, number 20, Maddox Rodell, Jr., We'll kick that deep. It's going to bounce, but will be fielded. Room to return. Going to get in a good return. He's out across the 40. Great opening return there for field position by the Conroe Tigers. On the return for Conroe, number 13, Nigel Lede, a sophomore. And out to lead Conroe Tigers is Mr. Garlock at the quarterback position, as always. Clayton Garlock, the district leader in passing yards. Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting to watch this offense. As times progress, so is their offense. A very pass-heavy team. They, he, you know, Warlock, he like, really likes to whip the ball around, and it'll be exciting to see what he does tonight. And Garlock going to open up in a two-receiver formation. They do have an H back there up top. You know, option out left. He's going to keep fall forward for just a few yards when I watch the Grand Oaks defense in their non-district games they look to have some decent speed to the edge but again they weren't really challenged that heavily against those two opponents so I'm looking forward to kind of getting a better look at them here tonight and seeing how they they stack up against what's been a really high-powered Tiger offense so far this year Lewis Williams number three for Conroe is the main danger man out wide Five wide, empty backfield for Garlock. Second eight. And quick flare, flag, going to stop the play. False start offense. Somebody was anxious on that one. Back up five yards. Bring second and 13. You know, I got to watch last week's Grand Oaks versus College Park game. And the thing that really hurt the Grand Oaks defense was the long ball. Having guys like Cody Maladinka with the 50-yard touchdown. So, Conroe's pass offense may be successful here. There's Garlock going to do a little head fake. Going to roll to the right. Didn't find what he wanted downfield. Going to run again. Get close to midfield. We'll pick up a nice little chunky yards, though, to get in third and manageable. Looking like about a third and five. That'll bring up third and four, perhaps. Third and four it is. 10.57 on the clock here in the first quarter. Opening possession of the football game here tonight. Garlock going up to the line. Telling him what he wants to do on this play. Four wide, two by two shotgun. It's three down up front for Grand Oaks. Again, speed option top side. Going to pitch it. That's Kendall. Going to get around the edge. Get a first down. Nicely executed speed option. It's the chains move. Split backfield now. Three receivers. Flag coming in on the near side. They're going to Signal procedure again against Conroe, their second on this drive. First and 15. Now Conroe, four receivers out now. Trips here to the near side. Three receivers, one up top. Williams. Shifting there on the lower side. They're going to run a jailbreak screen underneath. Had a little bit of room, but just gets tripped up. Nice awareness by the Grand Oaks defender who is up for the occasion on that one to stop what could have been a big gain. Those plays always have a chance to break loose for big yards if even one guy is out of position. Thankfully for Grand Oaks, they get the tackle before the receiver can build up ahead of steam there. They're going to stay in the four receiver look. Second and 11. Garlock again forced to keep the ball, having to do a lot of running hurt here in the early going. Grizzly defense able to rally to him there, bring up another third down. 
Conroe was successful converting their third and four a moment ago with the speed option. This is third and seven, a little bit more of a passing down territory here. We'll see what they do. Four receivers. It's Williams in the slot. Let's see if he switches positions out wide. He does. He's going to flip with his receiving partner there. Garlock. As a man, can't complete it. Like, yeah, he had the opening he needed. Just couldn't quite make the pitching catch there. Bring up fourth and seven. They're probably on the spot, at the spot on the field where they can go for it and dial up something here. Too far to kick a field goal and in that awkward area for punting. With the kind of offense they have, why not? Why not take some initiative early in this game? Great job of picking up the blitz there by the Conroe offensive line. Garlock does the rest, hits his man over the middle for a first down wide open on that play. Like Kyle, Kyle Payne on that reception. And there's that passing offense that we, we've talked about. You know, like you mentioned, 44 points scored against Oak Ridge. That's a fast pace, deep down the field type of offense. And that reception really shows what they've been successful at. Yeah, watch this Tiger offense continually answer the bell under heavy pressure from Oak Ridge all game last week. They're comfortable in any kind of game with scoring. So Garlock, again, forced to kind of wait and survey his options. Made a nice attempt there to the end zone. Can't bring it in, though. Had to buy his time there and see if somebody came open, took a shot. It was a good safe shot where only his man was going to catch it or it was going to land out of bounds. It's kind of heady type throw you expect from a senior leader like Garlock is. Not going to force anything. It's one thing that stood out to me in the games I've watched Connor. He's just a really accurate thrower of the ball. He rarely makes a, a mistake in terms of location. Keeping up the middle is Garlock. Again, chance for Grand Oaks defense here to try and bow up in the red zone, third and long. You know, when you have a guy like Garlock who you trust so much as coaches, you really want to keep that ball in his hands. Whether it's passing or like we've seen so far, these QB runs, you trust the guy, you give him the ball, and see what he can do. And this is exactly the kind of field situation where senior experience can show up in a big way. Right, elevated the throw there. Don't think they had the depth on the route for a first down, even had it been caught. There is a flag on the far side, though. Not sure what the call is. We'll find out. Flag came in from the area of the Conroe sideline almost, like sideline warning. Like Conroe field goal team will run out onto the field here and try and tack on three. Nice early stand by the Grand Oaks defense, though. Always a win when your opponent gets in the red zone and you're able to hold to an attempt for a field goal. And here is Worcester Cruz Granados. For the kick. That is good. Kicks it through, so the Conroe Tigers draw first tonight on the scoreboard. 3-0 Conroe, 7.49 left in the first quarter.
you know, as Granddad's huddles up here getting ready to receive the ball for the first time since their last game, Coach Jackson definitely probably talking to his team saying, all right, we know what happened last week. Let's learn from it and let's come out, come out strong and put some points on the board. Again, Cruz Granados here to do the kicking duties for the Conroe Tigers. Will be peeled with a chance at a return here. Some space to work with. He will bounce it. Similar return to what Conroe had on their opening kick. Out close to the 40 here about. Good spot for the Grizzly offense to pick things up here tonight on their first possession of the football game. Again, Grand Oaks more than capable of being in a scoring football game themselves with the explosive running ability that they have as well as the play action they can do off of that down the field to players like Juan Farrakhan who can make those big receiving plays as well off of all the running they like to do in their signature wing tee set, which they're going to open up in very quickly here. Up the middle, Brandon High going to look for space. Again, High is the district leader in rushing yards right now. He is the one, uh, the catalyst for this offense. If they can get him going, it's usually going to be a good night for the Grizzlies on offense. Four-yard gain there to start. They'll take that all night, actually. Again, Grand Oaks will move very quickly in this offense. It's what they like to do, run a lot of plays, get on the defense very quickly. Tight formation here. And again, it's high. He has room around left side and a lot of it. He's going to break this one well into Conroe territory. Wow, shows some acceleration up the sideline. Touchdown, Grizzlies. He did not step out of bounds. Great run by High. 56-yard touchdown there for Brandon High. I mean, a little jet sweep across, and he just found the outside and kept going along the sideline. About a 56-yard touchdown. Electric way to start for the offense. 6-3 Grizzlies now on the scoreboard. On to attempt the PAT is Maddox Rodell and High, I think, surprising the Conroe defense there with that acceleration. They thought they, they may have had him, you know, coming up the sideline, but he kicked it into another gear there to get in the end zone. Had a good view of it up here in the booth. Definitely did not step out. And that's what Brandon High does. Very good running back. I've been just super impressed with him this season. And I mean, you talk about that wing T formation offense. That has what that's what what has made Grand Oaks so successful this year. So many options with that formation. The defense is caught by surprise almost every time. And what I love about the way they execute it is it's quick hitting. Again, we just uh, spoke a few seconds ago about how quickly they were getting lined up there. And again, when you hit the defense that quickly, they don't have time to react to what you're doing or even get lined up properly in some cases. And a lot of passing spread offenses do that too. They line up very quickly identify the weakness in the defense and attack it with impunity over and over again if they can. And Grand Oaks obviously seeing something they like here and High able to bounce that one out for a huge answer to Conroe's opening field goal here. Rodell sends that one deep, will be fielded. Again, chance at a good return here. Spins off a man, wow, what a tackle. Outstanding tackle. And that is number 15, Elijah Cooper for Grand Oaks, just making a phenomenal special teams play there. Number seven, Jace Williams, a senior for Conroe on that return. That was about as pretty of a tackle as you'll ever see on a kick coverage. And Garlock and flag in immediately. Will this be yet a third procedure? It looks like it is coming from the same official here every time. Brief discussion. They're going to wave it off now. That would have been Conroe High's third penalty of the evening on that procedure call, but they'll pick this one up 
good news for them. They don't want to have to start minus five on a drive, of course. Two by two, four receivers now for Garlock. Dump it to Kendall. Swing pass. Positive play on first down. And a six yard pickup. We are at 636 and counting here in the first quarter tonight. Again, both of these offenses going to move quickly all night. Split backfield now for Conroe. Garlock has three receivers. Going to go sweep up top. I believe that's Payne on the carry. He appears to have fallen across for the first down yardage. You just kind of feel both these offenses moving really, really good. This Conroe seems to seems to be getting themselves into a familiar situation of a shootout as they had in week one. Going to be exciting to see how many points both these teams put on the board. First and 10 for the Tigers. Going to have four receivers again, single back. Garlock going to roll right here. Down the field, pass broken up. Could have been intercepted. Nice play on the ball. Great play there by cornerback number 17, Logan Telfer. You know, he was looking for his receiver out wide, and Telfer just stuck his hand out, broke it up. And Garlock, aside from the one big uh, fourth down conversion they had, he's been hard-pressed to find open men so far on his dropbacks. He's had to do a lot of running here in the early going. Speed option again, he's going to keep it. Pitch was taken away that time. And third down and about seven. Again, number three down here to the near side, Lewis Williams, district leader in receiving yards. Likely a unanimous all-district selection when all is said and done here in a little over a, a month's time as we get to the work our way towards November. Just a junior still. He's the key player in this Tiger offense, one of those guys that you spend the week talking about. Grand Oaks will no doubt be identifying where that man is on every snap. You know, I, I think something with this Conroe offense that makes them so exciting is there are always these chances for big plays. Garlock, you know, rolling out, you know, these read options are, are a good chance for any play they could break loose. And Treshawn Kendall flanking Garlock now motioning out of the backfield out wide. Empty set now for Garlock. Pressure up the middle from Grand Oaks. Garlock's going to escape and have first down yardage on that. Again, Grand Oaks making a commitment to try and take away options deep down the field, but Garlock, happy to oblige, uses legs to move the chains. Just taking what he has, not trying to force anything. Saw a little nine yard run right there for him. And four receivers set here for the Tigers first and 10. Right at five minutes remaining in the first quarter here tonight. Garlock again, can be flushed out of the pocket. Look for room, just minimal gain there, maybe a yard. Into the Grand Oaks sideline he goes on that one. And Conroe attempting an early response after the emphatic explosive touchdown from Brandon High and the Grand Oaks Grizzlies erased the early 3-0 
advantage that Conroe had established on their first drive of the game. Second possession of the game for Conroe. Four wide, three receivers up top. Be close to a first down game there. That is number 24, Christopher Ware, a junior running back on that carry. Black could be spotted just short. Third and two. And Conroe High took care of their first bit of playoff business last week by securing that key three three point win over Oak Ridge. Grand Oaks trying to get on the board themselves here tonight. Conroe showing another run from Garlock, something I haven't seen really much of at all in the previous two games that I've seen from Conroe. I haven't seen Garlock run as much as he has in those games as he has already in this one, just in two possessions. Well, I mean, obviously they found something when looking at Grand Oaks film that really showed them they wanted to run the ball this game. Carl Ock looking for the slant, has Williams, there he is. See if he can hit the edge here, he's gonna try. First down gain by Pliny. Going to get inside the red zone. Set Conroe high up in business here with a chance for more points. Again, that's the man that we're going to talk a lot about tonight, Williams. The key feature in this Tiger offense, at least in terms of the, the receiving game. You have other players, of course, who can make the plays, but he's the one that makes the biggest ones normally. Where again on that carry. Gain a few yards. Again, as we mentioned right at the start, last year's game between these two was a one-pointer. Grand Oaks winning 19 to 18. You're in for a treat if this one is anywhere near as competitive as that one. It's off to a good start here for us tonight. Split backs. Going to do a throwback. Flag does come down on that far side. Positive gain by Conroe, but we'll see what the flag is. Maybe not good news for the offense, given the location of the flag. Illegal formation against Conroe. Seen a few early flags go against Conroe here in the early going of the procedural nature. You're going to want to clean that up, of course. Yeah, I mean, when facing a team like Grand Oaks that will really take advantage of your mistakes, that's something you're going to want to clean up. Motion into the backfield, then back out. You're going to show a screen and then throw underneath to Williams. Really nice design on that. Touchdown, Conroe. Great design on that play. You mentioned it earlier when they ran it. That jailbreak screen just has the opportunity. And right there, his blockers found the guys they needed, and he had an easy run into the end zone. Yeah, it's a great-looking combo screen there. Fake the wide screen to the running back who had motioned into the backfield and then out of it. Kind of looked his way and then threw back underneath on the, the jailbreak-type action to Williams. And, of course, he's going to do the rest from there using his athletic ability. Instant response from Conroe High. We've got points on every drive so far for these teams. It'll be 10-7 now for Conroe. It's Cruz Granado's tax on the extra point. Was, you know, nice solid pacing there by the offense. Really gave Conroe's defense some time to look over the plays and to adjust to Grand Oaks' offense. And then also gave Grand Oaks the chance to scheme up some more plays when they come back out here now. Yeah, we are clearly in for a fast-paced game and yeah the scoring's already here for us and yeah we'll see if this one just becomes a track meet 
I, I don't see this one being a 1918 <laughs> final again like last year. And we're halfway there and not out of the first quarter yet. So I think that is definitely a safe bet here tonight. And again, we talk about the, the playoff implications. Six teams in the district and four playoff spots up for grabs. Again, Conroe did the first job they had to get done last week. Grand Oaks, again, looking to get on the board here tonight. Will not be an easy one for them to get, but with the Woodlands coming up next week, they obviously want to avoid an 0-2 hole here tonight. Yeah, and I mean, we talked about it off stream, but you can still make the playoffs with two losses, but you'll have your back against the wall the whole time, so this is a must win for Grand Oaks. Yes, definitely want to get the winning taste in their mouths here tonight. Get the wind in their sails here for district. And again, in the playoffs, the two largest enrollment schools, so the top four teams from each district in the state of Texas go to the playoffs. And of the four teams that make the playoffs from each district, the two largest go to the Division I bracket and the two smaller schools go to the Division II bracket. If Grand Oaks gets in, they'll be Division II. Run up the middle here again. That is severe on the carry. Again, good positive play on first down. I'm going to move it about six yards. Grand Oaks is the number four enrollment school in the district after the Woodlands, Conroe, and College Park. And again, the last alignment was done in 2020. Uh, early in 2020, actually. So the enrollments have obviously updated since then, but we won't have another alignment until next year. Quickly to the line, Grand Oaks offense. And by quarterback Jacob Smith, a junior. He's going to change things up. Motion into the backfield. Loose snap. Grand Oaks appears to have fallen back on that, so Grizzlies maintain possession there, but they will back up a couple of yards. Third down now. Just one of those moments that you're trying to move a little too fast, get the ball in someone else's hand. you got to get it in yours first. Yep, and in this sort of under center, quick hitting offense that the Grizzlies have, that's, of course, the one thing that can crop up anytime you're running this sort of Kind of quick handoff based offense is the ball handling issues. Grand Oaks normally pretty sound with those. Smith back looking for a play action pass. Flushed out. Throws a strike though. Will he hold on to it? No. Number 87, Brendan Montemayor, senior tight end, intended man down the field. Absolute strike from Smith though. Yeah, just one of those unfortunate alignments. Like you said, absolute dot, but, you know, defender was just right there to get him right when he got his hands on it. And the first punt of the evening for either team now. Just a single man back for Conroe. It's number seven, Jace Williams. Now I've let that one bounce take a very favorable grizzly bounce. And field position is flipped successfully. Very nice punt. Again, if you're Conroe High, these are the moments in the game where you want to try and pounce any chance you get to put distance on the scoreboard against this Grand Oaks team. Always a good idea because you know with the kind of offense that you know they're up against here tonight, Grand Oaks can Break a big play at any moment, so any chance you get to put breathing room on the scoreboard really goes for Grand Oaks, too. You've got to take it. <laughs> it was my favorite word last week, but then I'll say it again. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Yeah, being able to strike when the other team can't, it really helps you gain some momentum. Be a nice passing catch there from Garlock. To number 30, that is Krishan Rogers Matthews, a junior on the reception. And again, just a, what we get, what we become used to seeing from Garlock, just accurate throws. Empty backfield now, first and 10. First quarter is going to run out though now. And at the end of the first quarter, Conroe High leads 10-7 over Grand Oaks. 
And the Tigers in possession as we move into the second quarter. Empty backfield here for Garlock and the Tigers. First and 10, start of the second quarter. A swing pass out to the left. And look to break through there, but Grand Oaks up for the challenge. Going to make that stop near the line. Williams on the reception. The man who scored the touchdown for Conroe. Their last possession. Yeah, my name is Jeremy McGrail. I'm joined by Zachary Berger here tonight. Thank you for joining us on this Conroe ISD live stream. Second and eight for the Tigers, four receivers. Going to motion across Payne. Scarlock, another strike. That is Payne on the reception. He gets loose, and he's going to keep going with this one all the way down to the 30. Nice run after the catch. Broke loose after that one. Again, picking up yards in chunks now. I mean, a 37-yard gain right there. Big play. This is kind of Garlock specialty, right? The roll out, find a man open, and pass. His accuracy is really showing. Yep, yeah, just doing a great job finding the open man, delivering a strike, and then receiving talent, taking over from there after the catch. Throw underneath again, complete. It's nice spin move there from Treshawn Kendall, senior. Nifty footwork. That will move the chains another first down and the Tigers once again in the red zone of Grand Oaks, knocking on the door for more points here tonight. There's four receivers set from the Tigers. Trips up top, single man down to the bottom of the screen. Again, swing pass up top. He's got room. Ball comes out, though. Grand Oaks is going to have it. Fumble recovery by the Grizzlies. What a huge moment in the game there. Conroe appearing to be well on their way to points there. They were well on their way in the red zone, and then just a huge fumble there. Recovery by the Grizzlies. Looked to be Logan Telfer with the fumble recovery. He forced it, and he got it himself. Great play. Yep, and I believe we mentioned his name earlier on a, a nice pass breakup as well, so looks to be involved here early and often. So a new lease on life here early, quickly up to the line as always. Going to go back to high, the man who broke the game's first touchdown on long run. Going to be stacked up there, loss of yards, two yards lost on that one. Tiger defense ready for that quick snap. Smith going to get the play from the sideline. Again, moving under 10 minutes left in the second quarter here. Wing T set, sweep. There's Sevier coming around the bottom side. He's going to keep that almost out to the 20. Be about the 18 is where they mark him, maybe a little bit past it. Can bring up a third in about three. Actually, they'll call it two, kind of a long two. Be high up the middle. Get stacked up. Going to be very close. They may have to measure this one. 
officials are coming in basically right on the marker, 21 yard line. This is one of those that depends on left foot or right foot spot. We have the far referee signaling to move the chains over, so getting that message relayed. It looks to be right on there. One ref calling it a fourth and inches, one calling it a first down. Let's see what they... And, okay, like that, they are going to move the chains, so that will be a first down for the Grizzlies. Yeah, nicely picked up there, Zach. You were all over that one. Like maybe a brief timeout on the field. This be a good opportunity for us to remind you to find us on social media channels at Conroe ISD Sports. Of course, those of you watching this YouTube live stream, like, subscribe, and follow our channels on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. All helps increase the exposure for our district and help more people find out what's going on in this district and see what our student athletes are, are doing. And we'll be 8 minutes and 48 seconds away from halftime here in the second quarter. Does the head official reset the clock there? Yes, yeah, CSD Sports, CSD Athletics too, I believe. Like you said, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also go subscribe to the Moorhead version of this YouTube channel, one for both stadiums. Wing T, here comes the sweep, Zvir. Looking for room around the right. Great open field tackle, though. That's Marcus Scott. Senior made a couple of just enormous plays against Oak Ridge last week, and that's a great tackle. He's really a dude to point out. You know, he, he transferred over to Conroe, I believe, at the beginning of last year, and he's a D1 offer going to University of Missouri. Really a key piece for this Conroe defense. Bring up second and 10 here for Grand Oaks. Bunch set, ooh, mishandled the snap there. They were looking to possibly do, Let's see if Conroe is saying they have it, and they do. Another change in possession. That's the second turnover here tonight. Tigers ball. Wow, wow, wow. Both fumbles happening inside the red zone. I mean, talk about game-changing plays right there. Absolutely. Anytime it happens, always a huge moment in the game. And it looked like at first the Grand Oaks player had fallen back on the ball, but it may have been a case of where when he fell on it, may have hit him in the, the belly and then kind of popped loose underneath there just enough for Conroe to be able to pounce on the ball, which they did. Right about where Conroe left off when they turned the ball over about a minute ago. So Garlock in the Tiger offense picking back up in the red zone with a chance to put a little bit of breathing room on the scoreboard here. Of course, whenever your defense hands you a gift like this, so close to the end zone, you've got to repay them with a touchdown. Anything less is a win for the defense in this situation. Split backs, three receivers. It's pain on the sweep. It eludes the first man, but can't elude the help from the Grizzlies. Nice job of stringing that out. Be a loss of a yard. Second and 11 coming up. Nice crowd here tonight for a Thursday night game into it. Grand Oaks band rocking. Is Garlock going to try and run it here? Picks up a couple of yards. He's going to bring up a third and long. Be third and nine. 
6.54 left in the second quarter and counting. Scarlock looks to the sideline trying to get a good play here. For Conroe, this would be a really big conversion right here. Yep, empty backfield for Garlock. Looking over the middle, throws a strike to his man underneath. Going to lean forward. He will have the first down, be first and goal at the three-yard line or thereabouts for Conroe. Again, lined up with the empty backfield, spread five guys out. Found a man underneath. Always important in those situations that you don't try and do too much. Just take take what's given to you, and that's exactly what they did there. Yeah, and that was Lewis Williams, the third, really being able to cut up the field and get that first down for his team. Scarlock going to fake the sweep, roll up the middle, touchdown. Nicely executed by Garlock, and Conroe does what they had to do there and punch the ball in the end zone after picking up that fumble recovery from their defense, and now... Conroe High leading 16-7 to on the scoreboard. 6.04 left in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, you got that second chance, right? Fumbled about at the same yard line, about the three. But then Grand Oaks also fumbling. Got the second life and didn't lose this one. Here's Cruz Granados on for the PAT here. Saw him out on the field in the pregame doing some really cool soccer-style flicks with the football. He's got skills. 17 to 7, Conroe leading over Grand Oaks. As we are in the middle of October, student sections, fans, and teams are enjoying their pink out games, representing, of course, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Of course, always good to see communities united for a good cause. Such as that, nice to see that it's become a tradition kind of every year now across Texas and really wherever high school football is played nationally, kind of taking the cue from, I believe it was the NFL that kind of started that with the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now Grand Oaks, of course, very key juncture in the game. We've got Sevier, Sean Sevier, and Tristan Frazier, sophomore back to receive this kick deep. As Cruz Granados tees it up. Or the Tigers going to boot it in between a pooch and a deep kick. Going to push it out past the 30 where the Grizzlies will set up shop. Had a couple of ball handling issues here tonight with snaps. And I believe it was a kind of a botched play action attempt on their last series where they were kind of motioning out of the backfield. The quarterback attempting to kind of pull out from under center drop the ball in the process of doing that. So they've got to obviously get that back in order and just execute their offense the way they know how because they can pick up yardage. Heavy pressure by Conroe. Going to be evaded. They're going to say incomplete. That was Brendan Montemayor, intended receiver there. Valiant attempt by the quarterback Smith there to find his man. Couldn't quite make the connection. Yeah, I think it looked like he just might not have held on to it all the way going down to the ground. Yeah, but important for Grand Oaks to kind of keep their cool here and just run their offense. No reason to panic. Tempted screen there to high, broken up by Conroe. Tigers with their ears pinned back on this series. And smelling a little bit of blood in the water here. You know, 
on the Grand Oaks side, I do want to shout him out. The quarterback, you know, Junior Jacob Smith. You see the talent. He has the speed. He has the arm strength. He just has to take it, you know, one play at a time and let his offense work. But so far, you know, the Tigers defense really putting the pressure on him, showing him why, why, why they should be winning. Yep, obviously still very early in this football game. A lot of time left to go. See what Grizzlies dial up here. We go deep down the sideline. Great catch by Zvir. He tracked that football to perfection there. Went up and made a really nice grab. And what a huge conversion for the Grizzlies. We are at 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Actually 525 and counting in the second quarter. Huge conversion for Grand Oaks. That's what you need to. That's what you need to start getting the momentum rolling. Nice deep 40-yard pass there for Smith. Yep, and Zvir, one of the senior leaders, exactly one of the guys you have to depend on in games like this to make a big play in a big moment. It's high. Been shackled since his first run. Wow, he somehow gets loose from that, and he's going to burst up the sidelines again. Touchdown. What a run. Looked like he was down, spins out of it, takes it up the sideline. Feels like deja vu as he ran, ran down that sideline. Yeah, like you said, he kind of got wrapped up by the ankles, but he stayed on his feet, stayed moving, and just right up the sidelines again for a touchdown. Well, it looks like they're actually going to bring it back now oh. to just inside the 20, so they will say he stepped mm -hmm. out of bounds. Okay. Had to be really close, but regardless, what a run. Timeout on the field. In Grand Oaks. Trying to stay alive here in this football game early. Keep themselves in it. You still got to come in high for the run, though. I mean, got got wrapped up pretty pretty quick by the ankles. But, yeah, stayed on his feet, kept moving. Unfortunately, just stepped right out of bounds. Right. First and 10 for the Grizzlies. And a sweep to Zvir up top. Keeps his balance still going. He gained a few yards there. These key pieces for the Grizzlies really know how to keep moving, keep, keep running to the ground and stay up. Really helps you get those couple extra yardage. Definitely takes a certain kind of attitude as a runner in this style offense. Keep those legs moving. No plays over until you're down. It's high up the middle. Gonna push the pile a little bit there. Big boy still working, trying to push him ahead as far as they can there. Gonna bring up a Third and very manageable here for Grand Oaks. Be about a third and five from the looks of it. Third and six. 348 and counting until halftime. Again, Conroe High leading 17 to seven over Grand Oaks so far here tonight. Be a flag coming in. Conroe. All over the backfield there before anything can develop. Tiger defense just appearing to send everyone into the backfield right now. Bring in one or two more than what Grand Oaks can block. The offsides on the defense, though, so a nice break there for Grand Oaks. 
Won't quite be first down yardage, though. Bring up third and one now. 3.31 on the clock until halftime. And Grand Oaks will receive the ball to start the second half. It'd be really big if they can punch it in for a touchdown here. Surge ahead for the first down there. And make sure they keep themselves within striking distance here tonight. Again, Sean Spears, senior running back, making a huge catch down the sideline to extend this drive on a third and long earlier. Here comes a sweep. Right back to that man's beer. Going to look for space but can't quite find it. Going to be around tackled around the six. Maybe a yard gain. Other than those couple uh, little out route passes, the Conroe defense, I, I should say the Conroe linebackers have really done a good job of limiting those sweeps to the outside by the running backs. Yeah, we've been seeing, seeing uh, more penetration from the Tiger defense just getting all over that backfield. See if they dial high's number here. They go play action, play action. Be a bootleg, gonna pass. Touchdown, well executed. Not a lot of space to work with whenever you run that boot to the tight side of the field, but they manage it there. Well executed pass by Smith. And you wanna talk about a guy that we haven't mentioned this much yet? That was uh, Quanell Farrakhan Jr. with the catch. He's a freshman, folks. I mean, a guy who's done it all for this offense in only his first year. Great play, great catch. And the score is now Conroe 17, Grand Oaks 13. Point after attempt here on the way. That will be good, 17-14. Max Maxing it, making no mistake with that kick. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a much-needed score there for Grand Oaks, keeping them in the game, and as we enter the two-minute drill of the half, you know, something to really really shorten that Conroe lead. Two minutes and six seconds until half. Max it puts the ball down. Tee it up here, going to position for a pooch. Which is exactly what he does. Going to be fielded by Payne. Ooh, flies in for a tackle attempt. Doesn't get him. Payne's going to be able to turn the corner on this one. Steps out of bounds around midfield. Dangerous return man to have as an up back there. Not the, not the guy you want to see running the football if you're Grand Oaks on that kind of play. That extra 20 yards right there by that return could be very crucial for the Conroe Tigers offense. Now you can take just a little bit more time, really make sure your plays are thought through to try and score one more time for the half. Yeah, of course, an advantage, built-in advantage that Conroe has is that their offense perfectly suited for the two-minute situation. They don't have to do anything different, run the exact same plays they always run. It's Garlock, far sideline, catch out of bounds by Williams. Again, case in point right there. Nice out route. At the sticks, moves the chains easy as you like. Yeah, Garlock really making it look easy. Like you said, find your receiver, quick catch, step out, and barely any time off the clock. Garlock swing pass left, has Kendall. Gonna try and look for space, not much to work with there, but he does pick up a few yards inside the 40 of Grand Oaks. Down to a minute and 37 left in the half. Two timeouts for Grand Oaks, two timeouts for Conroe.
Downfield has his man cleanly caught. It'll be around the 20. Number 18 for Connor on the reception, Brashad Stokes, a senior. First down, 22-yard line. Tigers in business here, a minute and 12 and counting on the clock. Again, they've got two timeouts. Clock stops briefly for a reset of the chain. Three receivers here for Garlock. They actually run a sweep here to the left side. Randuck's going to stack that up inbounds. Forward progress is going to be called there. Jace Williams. Now Conroe will call a timeout. They'll have one left now. Fifty-six seconds to go in the half. With how well this Conroe passing offense works, they're really looking like a dark horse coming into this year. You know, you, you look at these passes by uh, Garlock, and it really shows that they're a well-run offense. Four receivers for the Tigers. Going to roll right is Garlock. Look for his man on the out, but nothing going on that play. No open man to throw to. Bring up third and medium. 51 seconds on the clock. Third and six. And Conroe in field goal range here, but obviously they want more than that. And Grand Oaks set to receive the kick in the second half. And pressure in Garlock's face, but he gets a calm pass away to Williams. Makes a great move and touchdown, Tigers. Nice move after the catch by Williams. He's going to take that right in, showing why he's a likely unanimous all-district selection here. 23-14, Conroe on the scoreboard now. 44 seconds remaining until halftime. Cruz Granados on for the PAT attempt. Again, Grand Oaks had the right idea dialed up on defense there, bringing pressure off of the side that Garlock was moving towards, but they... Deal with that, and then Garlock keeping his calm to deliver a strike to Williams, who does the rest with a nifty move to work the space for the touchdown. Yeah, his nifty move tripped up a, a Grand Oaks cornerback, and he was off from there. Great execution, great passes. Conroe offense looks unstoppable right now. Tigers definitely getting everything they want with Williams here in this game. And again, any opportunity you get to put points on the board in this one, create a little bit of cushion, a chance to be taken advantage of, and that's exactly what Conroe does there, take advantage of the opportunity they have, move right down the field. And they do it in less than a minute. And we were talking about how the offense they run perfectly suited for the two-minute situation, showing exactly why on that sequence. Once again, Grand Duck's now in a position of having to respond and not much time to do it. It's Tristan Frazier and Sean Zvier back for the kick. Hey, not much time, but not not impossible. With these little uh, little pooch kicks, they do have a chance to score. Last week they had a couple really big plays. See if they can pull off one more right here before the half ends. Yeah, once again, worth noting the Grizzlies do have two, two timeouts here remaining that they can work with. You know, line drive deep going to be a tricky one to kind of pick up there, but they do. Zvir, you know, see if he can get around the left, pick up space, but Conroe covers it very well. Great kick, gets that bounce, hard to recover for Zvir, and great wrap-up by the Conroe uh, special teams. 
Penning him all the way back now to about the 15-yard line. Going to be a hard one, but, hey, you never know. Two timeouts, it could happen. Yep, one big chunk play, and they're in business here. Let's see if they start off with kind of one of their more traditional kind of wing tee or option plays. And they're going to go to the man, Brandon High. Power style play there. Push it out for a nice chunky yards. The clock will run. Let's see if they just elect to go into halftime here or if they try and run one more. Not especially in a hurry. Yeah, it looks like Smith and the Grizzlies are just going to run one more and take us in the half. Yep, get what they can on this play. See what happens, maybe. Now they're going to step uh -huh. back. And that's how we'll go into halftime. Conroe High, 24. Grand Oaks, 14 on the scoreboard in this 13-6A encounter. Yeah, I mean, still still a great close game going into it. Going into halftime, you know, Grizzlies know what they have to do to keep their offense steady the way they work and just make the small adjustments. And Conroe keep putting the pressure on. It's going to be a good game. Join us for the second half. We'll see you here after half in a little bit.
100, award winning Conroe High under the leadership of Principal Dr. Tasha Smith along with Dr. Curtis Knoll, Superintendent of Conroe ISD, celebrating 129 years of excellence. Together, proudly present one of the oldest bands in Texas as it celebrates its 92nd birthday this year. Please give a big welcome to the legendary Conroe Tiger Band! <laughs> Under the direction of band directors Billy Semple, Don Martinez, and Ari Hernandez, as well as public art director Michael Henson and percussion director Lamar Burkhalter. Section of the week, Band Dance! Today, the band presents their 2021 competition show, Dia de los Muertos, which features original music by John Makes and Ian Braun. Combro Tiger Band, you may now take the field.
Lieutenant Sidney Ralph, Major Kenley Curtis, Major Leah Provo, Lieutenant Colonel Harley Morrison, and Colonel Briley Garza. The Royal Pride Drill Team is under the direction of Hannah Gassich and Catherine Fuller. We hope you enjoy their kick routine to dynamite. the Grand Oak High School Grizzly Marching Band. The Grand Oak High School Marching Band is led by Mike Blake, Brian Moran, Profession Director Jacob Sorala, Student Teacher Kelly Orlando, and Color Guard Director Trace Brown and Danny Walker. The band is under the field direction of Head Drum Major Andrew Tran, Senior Drum Major Emma Butler and Haley Brown, and Junior Drum Major Kylie Burke. The color guard is under the leadership of Captains Caitlin Molina, Caitlin Alexander, Sophia Winston, and Zaquavia Young. The Grand Oaks Grizzly Twirler is Emma Matez. This evening, the band will perform their 2021 competitive marching show entitled Prismatic.
And welcome back for the second half here. We're a little over a minute away from kicking the ball off as the teams run back out here. Start our second half of action here tonight. Conroe High taking a 24 to 14 lead into halftime. Had a little bit of everything in that first half. It was played at a pretty brisk pace in terms of the time it took to complete. We saw big plays and also some big momentum changes in ter terms of the, uh, the turnovers that happened. And I'm joined by Zachary Berger here tonight. And Zach, uh, what were your overall impressions of the first half and kind of what do you think we might see here in the second half? 
Yeah, I mean, it's been a really, really good ball game. You know, uh, from the Conroe side, I think the goal is just to stick with what you've been doing, right? You scored 44 points last week. You have 24 so far. Keep with that high-energy passing offense, and I think you're going to be fine. Now, Grand Oaks, you know, taking a loss last week, you just got to think back to non-district and think what worked for you and just try and stay rooted, right? Not let the game get too big for you, and you'll have a chance to come back. But we have a great second half ahead of us, and it will be exciting to see. And the Grizzlies will receive this kickoff here to start the second half. Obviously big for them, given that they trail by 10 on the scoreboard. And like you just mentioned, they don't need to do any panicking. There's plenty of football left to play here in the second half. Stick to what you do well on offense in the ground game. Don't get outside of character. Um, they did have a couple of issues on exchanges in the first half, so just iron out the little things like that. And you're executing coming away from the center and getting good exchanges and just making the good simple plays. And I think they'll have the success that they want on offense. And obviously some adjustments needing to take place with Conroe kind of pinning their ears back a little bit in the second quarter. They're really coming after their backfield. So no doubt Grizzly spent a lot of time talking about how to deal with that in the locker room. We'll see how that translates once they receive this kick. Cruz Granados kicking us off your second half. Can be fielded by Sean Spear, looking for room around the left side, gonna bring it out. Pretty good return out at the 35. And that's where the Grizzlies will set up shop. As Jacob Smith Jr. comes out to lead the offense. And Brandon High and Naquano Farrakhan Jr. scored the touchdowns for Grand Oaks in the first half. I looked like he was gonna you know, on his way to a huge night after he took that first touchdown for about a 57-yard gain, it looked like. Touchdown. And we're going to go sweep. First play of the second half here. Room around the right side. That is Farrakhan Jr. I think his touchdown reception was actually the only time he got his hands on the ball in the first half, at least that I remember. Definitely need to get him involved more, and they do here first play, third quarter. Yeah, he's one of those guys that you really look forward to his future. Only a freshman, and the way this offense uses him, it doesn't look like it, right? Doing these jet sweep runs, getting the passes, even returning that man. Yeah, quickly to the line as usual, up the middle, high. On the carry, he's going to bounce and see if he can get outside here. He's going to fight. Conroe does a good job rallying to him and making sure he's down. He's one of those running backs who take nothing for granted until he is on the turf and there's a whistle blown. We found that out a couple of times in the first half on big runs that he broke. He's like one of the best runners in the district. In fact, the statistical leader in rushing yards right now in 13-6A. He had mentioned kind of right off the, the bat in this game. In this offense, he needs to have good games every game. Because that role in this offense is so key. That big back roll, as they call it. Bring up a third and short here after that pass completion. Great job there by uh, Farrakhan to go and make that grab. And while, while it won't be a first down, it definitely helps your offense get closer to the first down. Ahead. The Grizzlies on the plus side of the 50 here in Conroe territory can do just about whatever they want in this down and distance. And go quick up the middle, quick hitter to high. Not sure if he got enough surge there for the first down. No, he'll be a yard short. So right away we have a very key fourth down conversion here that Grand Oaks is going to have to make. Should they choose to go for it, which looks likely here. Given the success that Conroe High found on offense. Good idea by Grand Oaks. High again up the middle, but they turn him around. They're going to stop him short. Huge stop by the Conroe Tigers. In fact, he's going to lose a little yardage there. They stack him up once again, penetrating. Yeah, wow. This this Conroe D line and linebackers are really putting the pressure on uh, Jacob Smith and this Grizzlies offense. Great stop there. Great way to come out in the second half. And the Conroe High defense actually ranked last in the district coming into this week, given the performance through the first half of the season but tonight they are just lathered up and coming after the backfield in this high-powered Grand Oaks rushing attack. 
And ever since that opening explosive touchdown by Grand Oaks, they've just really tightened up against Brandon High, not letting him get going. And as a result, Grizzly offense is grounded. Garlock looking for a pass. Again, accurate throw into the slot there. Going to be close to a first down, probably enough to move the chains. And Lewis Williams, man, we whose name we've called a lot tonight on the reception. Yeah, but that was definitely a good call about their defense. You know, as you mentioned earlier last week, letting up 41 points to Oak Ridge definitely was a learning experience, and they've held this Grizzlies offense. Run up the middle there, but Grand Oak's going to do a good job rallying to that and stacking that play up. Be no gain. That was Kendall getting stacked up there. Now Christopher Ware Jr. into the game. Give Kendall a breather. Four receivers here for Garlock. Again, talk about pressing advantage. This is another opportunity for Conroe to do just that. Going to throw a square in route, complete another accurate throw. Number 13, Nigel Lede, sophomore on that catch. Close to a first down. Bring up third and one. Garlock, just such a smooth operator back there. Again, we talked in the first half about just very accurate thrower of the football, not going to make mistakes. Knows what he's doing back there as a senior leader. He's going to fake and keep it around the left side. Good decision there. And he'll have the first down by about a yard. Chains move. Yeah, and, you know, speaking on that poise by Garlick, Garlock, um, you know, he's been doing a bunch of rollouts for his throws, but even when he stays in the pocket, you can just see that composure, you know, waiting to find his guy open. And four receivers set here for the Tigers. Two to each side of the formation. It's Ware staying in the game at running back. Fake. Garlock going to keep it. And he's done that quite a bit tonight. Not looking to make any heroic attempts into triple coverage or anything like that that may cause a turnover. Going to do the smart thing. Take what he can get in the running game. Live to play another down. It's 7.25 and counting down in the third quarter. Again, four receivers. Two by two set. Pressure from Garlock's backside there as he was releasing that football. I don't think we've seen that yet tonight, meaning Garlock getting hit by somebody on the Grand Oaks defense, but it happened there. Pressure applied, which is something they need a lot more of across the defensive front. That was number 58, Ryan Gilliland Sr. applying that. 100%, and I feel like, you know, with Garlock, he just, he, even when there is pressure, he's been able to escape anything. So good job by Grizzlies D-line there. Third down play. And once again, pressure again, and they bring him down for the sack. Huge defense here. Standing strong are the Grizzlies. Looks to be a combined tackle, but one of them being number 44, uh, Adrian Pache Pacheco. Yeah, Pacheco on the spot there, along with one of his buddies, it looked like. Again, pressure that they needed to do apply in the first half, but at least they're doing it here now. Fourth and long for Conroe up and staying out on the field. Let's see if they attempt the pass or if there's a quick kick here by the QB. Five wide. It will be a pass. Garlock surveying downfield. Has a man up the sideline. It's going to be caught. Touchdown. Man peeled off at the end there. Wide open. Nigel Lede, number 10, or uh, Braden Jones rather, junior receiver, sorry. Number 10 on that touchdown catch. And once again, talking about Garlock's just composure. He waited, right? Didn't see someone at first, but just kind of moved right out the pocket. And number 15 got open. Great open touchdown there for Conroe, converting on that fourth down. And Cruz Granados here for the PAT. And Conroe High taking advantage of the opportunity to put Cushion on the scoreboard, do just that. 
Conroe 31, Grand Oaks 14, 622 left in the third quarter. Yeah, that's just something about Conroe Tigers across really all sports. They just have these athletes, man. All of their star guys, they just they're really grind athletes and they get after it. So they're really showing it here against Grand Oaks. Why uh why why they are one and so far looking to go two and And correction on the touchdown receiver there was number eighteen, Brashad Stokes for Conroe. Saw it more clearly on the replay. Looked like number ten up here from the booth, but it was in fact number eighteen, Brashad Stokes, a senior on that reception. Good job by Garlock buying time with that little roll to the left and then Stokes peeling off there and getting wide open there on the sideline. Again, our social media message just popped up. Be sure and give us a like, subscribe, and follow on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Handles at Conroe ISD Sports and Conroe ISD Athletics. All that interaction in our channels helps our student athletes in our district get noticed and get pushed higher up the, the analytics results on those websites so it's easier for people to find us. And with the YouTube channel, we actually schedule these games, the live streams on the channels beforehand so you can know what games are coming up and you can be notified when the live streams start. It's going to be a nicely returned ball by the Grand Oaks here. He's going to race up the sideline. He's loose. He's going to take this all the way. Not going to stop him. On the return, number nine, that is Tristan Frazier, sophomore. Sneaks in at quarterback from time to time as well. He is the backup to Smith, but doing extra duty as a kick returner, and wow, did Grand Oaks need that shot in the yeah, arm. I mean, 6 9 in the third quarter, 31-20 on the scoreboard. Talk about a response. I mean, you, you let him touch down, but once again, great job there by Tristan Frazier. He found the hole, took it up the sideline, and outran that Conroe defense. PAT attempt coming here. Max Singet. Kick is up and good. So 31-21 now on the scoreboard. 6.09 again on the clock. Third quarter and right when Grand Oaks had to have something. Was, you know, obviously Conroe just put Nice cushion on the scoreboard, but Grand Oaks able to erase that immediately, which they had to do. The only bad news is now they have to play defense again, face Garlock. being treated to, once again, a competitive district game this week with a lot of big plays, just like I was lucky enough to witness up at Moorhead Stadium last week when Conroe played Oak Ridge to that epic game that we talked about kind of before our broadcast tonight, that 44-41 game that just went back and forth. Defense has dominated that one early, and then it just got out of control, exploded to life, and the late first quarter, second quarter didn't let up through the fourth. So we'll see if this is the start of a rally for Grand Oaks. Conroe kind of keeps them at arm's length here. Max Singet's going to send that one deep. He fielded, chance to get a return out of this. Good job of kick coverage by Grand Oaks there. It's number seven, Jace Williams, a senior for Conroe on that return. As much as the Grand Oaks sideline would have no doubt been pumped up by that kick return, the defense has got to be like, can we get a little bit of a breather here? Right back out to face Garlock in this high-powered attack once again. Six oh four on the third quarter clock, four wide. Receiver set here for Conroe. Garlock once again keeping running a lot here tonight. Keeping that Grand Oaks defense honest. Going to pick up a few yards, but again, keeps the Grizzlies honest to his threat. Yeah, and you know, running the ball right here is definitely not a bad idea. Like you said, kind of tiring out the defense after that return, making them come right back on the field, trying to wear them out so then you can break open for one play. Yep, Grand Oaks defense on the field for over half of this third quarter. And throw to the top sideline there. They're going to say he caught it, and they will. Going to mark him down. 
past the first down. Well caught there by Williams. Mr. Ever-Present for Conroe here tonight. A great receiving game. Two touchdowns on the night for Williams. Four receivers set here for Conroe. Trips to the near side. Williams single man up top. Nate Garlock over the middle slant route. Appeared to be looking for Nigel Lede there, number 13, sophomore. Couldn't quite make the connection. Five minutes exactly to go in the third quarter here. Clock stopped on that incompletion. Garlock, Garlock and this Connor offense just keep putting pressure on the Grizzlies' cornerbacks and safeties. You know, with how accurate he is with his arm, it, re it really shows that no matter what this defense can do, he'll be there to make the pass. Run up the middle here for Conroe. Going to get into a little bit of space there. Create a third and manageable. That's Ware, Chris Ware, junior running back on that carry. Came in to spell Kendall on the last series. Is remaining in the game here. Looks like Kyla Payne just subbed in. We're going to go five wide now here for Conroe. Empty backfield, Garlock. Third and four. Oh, looks like a lot of people jump there. Let's see if this is a free play. He's going to throw it as such, and it's caught downfield. What a catch. Deep down the field. That is number 30 on that catch. That is Krishan Rogers Matthews, a junior. Great job adjusting to that ball. So offsides on the defense obviously declined. Yeah. I mean, while it was a free play, definitely still being able to take advantage of it. A great little comeback there by number 30. Securing that catch. Nice, I don't know, 50-ish gain, 50-yard gain. And Garlock just dropping the ball in pinhole every time. Just super accurate. Just right where his man can make a play. Beautifully touched in ball there on the long ball. Uh, can you keep it there? No gain. And Garlock and this Tiger offense just looking extremely comfortable on the field. Looking like they're going to complete something every time they drop back to pass. Just finding all the gaps that they need to keep the ball moving. Oh, and they're going to move the ball ahead even further here. So it looks like that is going to be a targeting call against the Grand Oaks defense. Not quite sure what number, but that will move them forward into a first and goal. Yep, the chains are down now. It's there on the eight-yard line, so the end zone is the line to gain here now for Conroe. As they again attempt an immediate answer of a Grand Oaks score, something they did in the first half as well when Whenever Grand Oaks has applied pressure here on the scoreboard tonight, they've answered immediately. Four receivers. Look top side, fade route. This man's going to go up. Say incomplete on that. That was Williams, of course, intended receiver on that last play. And a handoff up the middle, but Grand Oaks all over it. Knife it down in the backfield there. Going to be a loss of a yard. Third down now from the 10-yard line. And Grand Oaks doing everything they possibly can here on defense just to try and just keep their team in this with a chance. Again, we're getting deep into the third quarter now, three and a half minutes to go. Grand Oaks starting to stack the box, trying to create more pressure on Garlock. And this Grizzly defense spending the whole quarter on the field. They've got Garlock in the backfield. They'll take him down. 
huge stop there by the Grizzlies. Back Connor all the way up to the 19 yard line. They're gonna have to bring out the kicking unit. So here will be Cruz Granados to attempt what will be a 35 yard field goal, a little over a 35 yard field goal. And on that sack, that was actually linebacker Brayden Bradley getting his name in here for the first time with that crucial sack to stop Conroe from converting on the third down. It's Cruz Granada's high snap well held though. Kick is up and he gets it, good. Again, about a 35, 36 yard field goal. So the score now will be Conroe 34, Grand Oaks 21, two minutes, 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Yeah, you know, and with Conroe, Conroe's game plan right here is just to keep applying pressure and putting points on the board. You know, while, okay, we couldn't score a touchdown there, at least getting that extra three, now it goes from a 10-point lead to a 13-point lead. Just keep putting on the points. Of course, the, the flip side of this for Grand Oaks is they're one touchdown away from this being a one-possession football game. So we will have ourselves a very good football game if they can find a way to put a drive together here and get in the end zone keep themselves alive in this football game. So definitely a huge stand by their defense to force at least the three-pointer down there. So again, kind of stay within arm's reach with a chance here. And, you know, Grand Oaks, while it isn't impossible to make the playoffs with two losses, you definitely want to don't want to be 0-2 with your backup against the wall, especially next week having to play the powerhouse of the Woodlands High School. You really want to see if you can come back and get this win here. Yeah, obviously huge any district win that you can get to kind of give yourself an advantage over the the contending pack. Only six teams in the district four going to the playoffs. Obviously heavy competition for those four available spots to go to the postseason. I think Grand Oaks can very rightly have that in their sights this year as being a main target that they would have this season is to be in that be in those state playoffs and chase that, whether it's yeah, just put themselves among the contenders in the district if they can. Again, very young program, very much still developing, but as they showed last year, I think they went seven and three overall, two and three in district last year. It was their inaugural 6A season. Not a bad place for them to start as a program. Quickly to the line here. Roll out. And throw deep down the field, but a really tough throw to make without getting fully set there. Couldn't get it down the field far enough for Farrakhan Jr. to have a chance. Yeah, with that rollout, it was just all arm there and slinging the arm on the run sometimes can be hard to get, get to your receiver. Yeah, I think a good chasing pack by the Conroe Tigers there, applying a little bit of heat on the back side of that. Smith maybe had a Another second more than he realized on that one to maybe try and set his feet, but regardless, incomplete. But the idea was to make a big play on that one. Drop back pass again, heavy pressure up the middle, gonna flush Smith out. Now he does find Paracon catch on the corner route. That time they do it. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. However, Some action with the head official back. What was the line of scrimmage? Didn't see a flag there. Oh, and that's going to be just a very hurtful holding call against Grand Oaks there after they'd managed to find Farrakhan Jr. on that big play. Going to be a huge reversal of fortune there. Back them all the way back up to about 17 yard line, their own 17 yard line. 2.17 on the clock in the third quarter here. Again, we talked about coming out of halftime, how Grand Oaks, you know, they don't need to get out of character here. Had what they wanted on that last play, but obviously when you're in a second 20, you kind of maybe open things up a little bit, but definitely they can still just try and run here and get some room back. Smith going to pull it, pass again, going to roll out to the right. Nobody to go to downfield, but he will push it out past the original line of scrimmage for a nice chunky yardage. 
Going to bring up a third and manageable now at least. Good job by Smith there, just taking what he had available. Yeah, a nice 15-yard run there on the scramble out. Once again, like you said, giving him a chance now in this third and five to convert after that penalty. Yeah, we'll have a brief stoppage in play here on the field timeout. Randoke's Grizzlies in survival mode here on this third down and five. Once again, if they can manage a score here, be within one possession in the game with a chance if they can make a play happen, starting with this third down. Up the middle to high, nicely designed play. He's going to bust this one loose. See if he can keep going. He'll get out close to midfield. Very nice run. Exactly what they needed. Moving the chains. Nice design to that run. We in misdirection, had some sweep action going, go up the middle to high. And that's going to be back to back 15 yard plays there for the Grizzlies. Definitely a good bounce back after the penalty. Yeah, and tough play for the defense to read at field level because you've got players going multiple directions, one horizontal showing the sweep. And high cutting them up the middle. Roll out here for Smith. Going to throw it deep, does get his arm behind that one. And caught deep down the field. That's going to set Grand Oaks up in the red zone. Big play made by Smith. That's Tristan Browse on the catch, junior receiver. Grand Oaks now really, really busting out the big plays. 15 yard, 15 yard, now a 47 yard pass. Get inside the red zone. Comes a sweep. Farrakhan gonna look for Smith. There's the flag coming in. Probably not good news for the offense there given the location of that right around where the blocking occurred. Could be a hold, but we'll wait and see. Clever speed sweep action by Grand Oaks. It will be a hold, unfortunately. Another damaging penalty on this drive against Grand Oaks. They overcame the first one, and now they'll have to do the same here. First and 20 does feel daunting for the Grizzlies. These recent plays shows that they can move the ball. And roll out Smith, looking for the corner. Nicely thrown football, gonna fall incomplete. Oh, touchdown, he caught it, wow. Thought he dropped it there for a second, but huge catch. Tristan Browse again, the man who helped bring the Grizzlies down here in the first place on that big catch just a couple of plays ago, catches it there. And just like that, Game's back on. Yeah, beautiful bootleg, beautiful out route, and just fade right over the shoulder for a nice 26-yard reception there. One minute and eight seconds remaining on the third quarter clock. Here's Max seeing it on for the PAT. And the kick that one, it's good. Line drive. Bring our score now, Conroe 34, Grand Oaks 28, six point ball game.
Yeah, and just like that, a couple big plays and some some momentum, and we have a brand new ball game. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Garlock and the uh, Tigers respond, trying to help their team get some more cushion. Yeah, Conroe extended their lead to thirty-one to fourteen. Then Grand Oaks followed that up with that big kick return for a touchdown to bring it to thirty-four to twenty-one or 31-21 rather, it was 31-14. Then the kick return made it 31-21. Conroe tacked on a field goal when the Grand Oaks defense was able to hold in the red zone and bring them to that kick. And then, of course, the latest touchdown drive we just watched capped off by passing from Jacob Smith, junior quarterback, and the two big receptions by Tristan Browse, fellow junior receiver. Grand Oaks right back in it. return from the Tigers there. I believe that's the man who's seen most of the kick return action tonight. Jace Williams, number seven, a senior. Yeah, you know, for, for the Grizzlies, like, some teams just have that ability to go into halftime, understand what they need to do, and then come out and execute. Great job there for the Grizzlies getting back in this. And now the question, of course, will go to the Grand Oaks defense and whether they can force a turnover or hold Conroe to some kind of three and out here or at least keep them out of any kind of scoring range. See if the Grizzly defense has a big play in them here. Timeout on the field. One minute, three seconds to go, third quarter. And with that, both teams will have, oh, sorry, the Grizzlies will have three timeouts remaining and that will bring Conroe down to one timeout left. Great action on the floss cam there as we go back to live action here on the field. Empty backfield for Garlock. Look for a quick bubble screen. Grand Oaks alive to the task there. They're going to shut that one down before it can get going. It's Kyle Payne on the reception for Conroe. Going to lose yards there. Cut away briefly. Timeout on the field. But the timeout point we brought up a second ago, Zach, could be... A really big deal moving down the stretch here. Again, as you mentioned, Conroe High maintaining one timeout left in the half. They've used two already, whereas Grand Oaks has all three. And, of course, if we are in a game that hangs in the balance here in the fourth quarter, that will potentially prove significant. Yeah, I mean, definitely a, a smart move here by the Grizzlies while being down, uh, conserving your timeouts for right now. But it will be, like you said, it will be interesting if we go to a tie ball game or even in the Grizzlies' favor, what Conroe will do with only their one timeout left. Yep, definitely something to note and keep in the back of your mind for all of our viewers out there. So we move towards the fourth quarter, 49 seconds remaining in the third. Second and 13 down in distance. Garlock gets anyone in the backfield with him. Looks like it's going to be empty set tight by receiver formation here. Is Payne going to look for the corner or the wheel route up the sideline? He's got him. What a catch. Keeps his feet. Will he take this all the way? He will. Touchdown, Conroe. What a catch and run. That is number seven. Jace Williams, senior for Conroe, making a massive play on that wheel route up the sideline. Wheel route, go route, whatever you want to call it. He's in the end zone. Yeah, I mean, talk about turning on the Jets. Like you said, Williams went with the wheel route, but once he cut up field, he burned his receiver, made the catch, and just kept going. Great play for Conroe to really extend this lead. Again, what a job maintaining his feet there, stumbling. Cruz Granados on for the PAT. He's going to get it up in true. So now the score is Conroe 
41, Grand Oaks 28, 23 seconds to go, third quarter. Ian receiver just does unbelievable job as Williams keeping his feet because he stumbled as he was catching that ball, trying to catch it on the run. Brief stumble, keeps his feet, not going to catch him in the end zone, although it was a valiant pursuit there by the Grand Oaks defender on hand. Like number two for Grand, o Grand Oaks, Gabe Anseldua, senior. Tried to run him down there, unsuccessful in the end. And Conroe, every time they've needed to answer tonight with the offense, they have, and they've done so. It's Grand Oaks, just when they kind of reel them back in, Conroe says, not so fast. We're going to keep you at arm's length here tonight. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's the best thing you can be doing. Just not letting Grand Oaks feel, you know, the momentum build, right? The, the joy and momentum when they score, but then being able to shut that down and respond really makes it hard for this Grand Oaks offense to keep coming back. Yeah, and once again, Conroe in the 40s on the scoreboard this week. Garlock showing why he is one of the very best players in this district, just totally smooth operator of his offense. It's been really impressed with him each time I've seen him this season, kick return by Grand Oaks. Gonna look for space around the right, has it. He's gonna turn the corner. He's got a convoy lead blocking out in front of him. Deep into Conroe territory, and this game has exploded to life now. A track meet has broken out here at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, and once again, Tristan Frazier, sophomore on that return, he was the one that returned the kick for a touchdown earlier. And we'll go to the head official here. Didn't see a flag come in, but the ball is being walked back. Block in the back, Block in the back. massive call against Grand Oaks. Takes what is just a great return and puts it back on the minus side of the 50. Not only that, back it up inside Grand Oaks' own 35, so just a massive penalty there. Yeah, that definitely hurts for the Grand Oaks offense there. But, you know, guys guys like Jacob Smith, the quarterback, and the, all their receivers just got to have a short-term memory right here and try and still make a play happen. Yeah, no need to panic. Just keep doing what you do best. This, which has been Smith rolling out, it appears, so far in this second half. Once again, looking to hit Farrakhan on the sideline. Throw out of reach, though. Second and 10, got five seconds remaining in the third quarter. With one more play about to happen in the third quarter, it is a 13 point ball game. So two scores would put the Grizzlies ahead by one. Straight drop back from Smith that time, finds his open man and again, Farrakhan Jr. Wasn't that heavily involved on the ball in the first half, aside from his touchdown catch. Second half, different story. He's been the main man on the offense for the Grizzlies so far here in the second half. And with that, we'll flip the field to the fourth quarter. Conroe High leading 41-28. Once again, we thank you for joining us tonight on this Conroe ISD live stream of this game. It's a lot of excitement here on the field. And just delighted to be enjoying this with you here on this Thursday night. We had a lot of weather in the Houston area throughout the day today, but cleared up this evening. Just a beautiful night for football. Got cooler temperatures coming in this weekend. Can't wait for those. You know, and something you gotta love is district football in general is already so competitive and so amazing. And then when these talented players just really show up. It's even more fun to watch. Once again, I'm Jeremy McGrail, joined by Zach Berger here tonight bringing you this broadcast. Grand Oaks, once again, Smith on the rollout, getting a workout now for his legs, doing the rollouts, flips it to high. Really nice awareness on that play. Farvian, Brett Farvian, like flip there to high. Great way to make something happen with that play when you have 
three Conroe defenders right on your tail. And Frazier definitely, or Smith rather, getting his money worth out of these sprint outs right now. Just got to feel like he's, he's running gassers out there every play. And again, this design is probably a response to the pressure that Conroe was able to generate on the backfield in the first half. Now, Grand Oaks appears to want to kind of move that pocket, get Smith out of trouble, and kind of throw the scent off the backfield. Here's high up the middle. He's got a big hole. Let's see what he does here. He's going to break forward. First down by Plenty inside the Conroe high 35. Again, such a quick hitting play up the middle to high. You know, but real quick, going back to Smith, you got to give him props with that. With all the pressure he's getting, still being able to make plays out of these, you know, situations that maybe aren't going his way. Definitely, definitely a good way to scramble out of the pocket and make these plays. And, of course, that run by High a second ago just shows what that opens up. Now the middle of the field is back on when you establish something outside like they've done on the rollouts. Mitchell's going to blow this one dead. False start. Back up Grand Oaks five yards. Brief timeout on the field here. We have 11.23 on the game clock here in the fourth quarter. Still plenty of time. Connor High head by 13 points. Yeah, definitely no need to panic if you're the Grizzlies right here. You know, still a two-possession game with 11 and a half minutes on the clock. Just keep playing you, keep moving the ball. Yeah, been a great position on the field to do just that, right in the wheelhouse area on the field where anything goes in the playbook in terms of what you can pull out. It's a great position to try and, again, pull back in within one possession here and then just give themselves a chance at least to, to try and make a stop, but first, thing, first things first, they've got to finish this drive in the end zone. It's going to be talked about a little bit in pregame about the hot start that Grand Oaks got off to this year, 5-0 and to start, and then, but of course we and even they knew that the challenge was coming in district play. Quickly up to the line, Grand Oaks. Straight drop back, sacked. Heavy pressure by Conroe there. Just all out pressure on the backfield. It's gonna put Grand Oaks in the second in a really long. On the sack, it looked there to be number 12, Brock Ireland. Great pressure by that Conroe D-line. Grand Oaks looking to design a screen there to high, but batted down by the Conroe high defense. Great job by the Tigers standing firm there. And Grand Oaks looked to have a lot of good things working there, but now they're backed way up. It'll be third and 23. Had a clever idea there on that screen attempt to hide, but couldn't pull it off. And again, Conroe being disruptive behind the line of scrimmage in the backfield, breaking that up. It's again, Smith on a rollout, trying to make a throw back across his body, always hard to do. And so now, punt team has to come out here. You know, this is probably going to be the biggest drive of the game here when Conroe comes to offense. Grand Oaks couldn't get a score, so still down by two possessions. But if you let Conroe score here, the game really starts to feel out of reach. So the Grizzlies really need a stop in this upcoming possession to still be in this game. Bobby Rodriguez on for the punt for Grand Oaks. He's a senior and back deep to return Jace. Williams for Conroe High. It's going to bounce up high. He's going to have, he's going to field it. Going to be tackled immediately. Dangerous ball to try and catch, but he was at sure hands there. Cleanly fielded it to keep the ball from being down probably around the one yard line if he'd let that go. Actually, the way it bounced, 
Take a really good bounce for the punter and the, the coverage team for Grand Oaks. So Grand Oaks defense chance to kind of take a risk here, maybe force the issue a little bit in terms of bringing a blitz to try and create some kind of havoc back there, give themselves a chance for a turnover. Again, pressure from Grand Oaks defense, something we've seen precious little of tonight, which is a credit to the Conroe offense, of course. In front three, down for the Grizzlies. Scarlock in a handoff, trying to work a little space there. That's Chris Ware, Jr. on the carry up the middle. As we talked about second you know, moving just under 10 minutes remaining in the game. Obviously, Conroe High, if they get points here, that puts the clock firmly against Grand Oaks, and it's already starting to become a little bit of an issue for as long as Conroe High remains on the football. Yeah, even, even if Conroe maybe doesn't pull out the score they want in this drive, if they can move the ball down the field, that time taken up will be very crucial. It's a tight four receiver formation motioning out of the backfield as Williams, or motioning across the formation rather. A timeout on the field. Wow, and with that, nine and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Conroe will take their final timeout, showing that they really want to convert this to a first down and keep this drive going. Yeah, deep in their own territory, Tigers obviously taking no chances here, wanting to make sure they've got the right play dialed up with as key as this possession is for them and potentially kind of salting this game away. Coach Cedric Hardeman and his Tigers looking to move to 2-0 and on the district slate here. Four receivers, two by two set. Going to throw a screen tunnel underneath Lewis Williams. Grand Oaks all over it though, good job of defending that. this week both teams here are going to be facing very solid opponents Grand Oaks going to face the Woodlands and Conroe facing home against College Park it's a five wide set here for Conroe third and six 856 and counting on the clock here remaining in the game Conroe high leading 41 to 28 Quick throw out over the middle, gonna have the first down. Easy pitch and catch. On the catch for Conroe, number 18, Brashad Stokes Sr. has a touchdown catch on the night here tonight. Great conversion there for Garlock and the, and the Tigers. Yeah, Grand Oaks looked to have pressure on up the middle there, but it was well protected, well snuffed out by the offensive line for the Tigers. Allowed Garlock to make that easy throw. There's Ware on the carry up the middle. Going to bounce it. Nice little gain. About four or five yards there. Definitely a shout out I want to make. Given the unsung heroes really of the night for this Conroe offense. The O-line. Really giving Garlock just the time he needs to make the pass. Great job by this O-line in their pass uh, rush. Yeah, I've only seen Garlock hit here tonight once or twice I think maybe just kept his jersey very clean and obviously Garlock quick release knowing where he's going with the football and when he's needed to buy himself time he's done that too using his legs quite a bit tonight to make safe plays motion into the backfield where gonna run the read there Garlock keeps but nothing doing gonna back up a little actually a yard loss bring up a third and six Third and seven, actually, loss of two yards. Until that play, it was kind of a picture-perfect drive here for Conroe so far. 
And big third down opportunity for the Grand Oaks defense here to try and make a play. One of their last chances to really kind of keep themselves in this football game if they can make a play here. Throw out to the flat to where it's going to be stopped short of a first down. So that's going to bring up a fourth down. Looks like Grand Oaks is going to hold here and Conroe is going to have to bring out the punt team. You know, while Conroe couldn't convert right there, you can't help but look at the game clock as that drive alone just took off about three to four minutes off the off the game clock, you know, now at six minutes and 46 seconds left. Yeah, it did just that, but the majority of the scoring plays we've seen here tonight have been quick hitter, explosive type plays that have taken very little time, like the kick returns, the big runs, and of course, in terms of... Uh, Conroe's perspective, the big passes, and even Grand Oaks has hit a couple of massive passes, including on their last touchdown drive that Browse caught. So punt is away for Conroe, fair caught, cleanly fielded. Good job by Sean Sveer, cleanly fielding that. And Grand Oaks in good field position here, right about the 45. In 6.38 left in the game. Goes without saying, got to make something happen on this possession. Got to get points. And, you know, luckily for the Grizzlies offense, they don't have to change too much because of they are already a very fast-paced moving offense. Just got to keep up that tempo, try and score here so they can get the ball back one more time. Throw over the middle, complete. That's Veer on the catch. Going to move into Conroe territory on that reception. Grand Oaks getting the protection they needed to get that pass away that time. Jacob Smith, junior quarterback, been under heavy pressure at times here tonight. As Conroe's just decided to pin their ears back against this Grizzly offense. High on the throw, Farrakhan, the intended man. Second and 10 coming up. Once again, my name is Jeremy, Jeremy McGrail, joined here tonight by Zach Berger. Smith can be flushed out, but he gets the pitch off somehow. Flips it out there. Makes a great play when it looked like he was going to be tackled. Gets the last minute flip out to High. High takes it around the edge for first down. Solid 16 yard run right there off that pitch. Definitely a great play there for the Grizzlies. That was not a designed option. That was a drop back pass for sure. Rolling left, but no space there, and Conroe's gonna bring him down. One of the men on hand for the stop for the Tigers, number 12, Brock Ireland, a junior. And approaching the five minute mark left in the game here. Grand Oaks on the move, but again, clock becoming an enemy here quickly. Spins out of trouble. Wow, nifty footwork. Looking downfield, trying to find a man on the sideline. Couldn't quite make the connection, but great job keeping that play alive by Smith. Jacob Smith out here looking like a, ma a magician, trying to get out of every every play, pulling out every trick he can to just try and keep this Grizzlies from another big loss. Yep, Russell Wilson style elusiveness on that play. Brief breaking the action down on the field. A 
and a third and 16 for the down and distance. Now we're gonna take a formal timeout down on the field. If Grand Oaks can convert this third down and get close to, or get the touchdown, you have to wonder if the onside kick becomes a must at that point. I would think so, given the way Conroe's moved the ball here tonight. Definitely, I 100% agree. You have to go for everything you can right now. With 4.45 left on the game clock, 41-28, 13-point lead, lead here for the Tigers. The Tigers have no timeouts, and the Grizzlies, Grizzlies now have two timeouts. Ball is on Conroe's 27. Grand Oaks seeing if they can pull off some late fourth quarter magic. It's again third and 16 to go for the line to gain. Line to gain is the 11 yard line. Bunch three receivers, straight drop back. It's flushed out, has his man on the side there. Gonna get back just past the original line of scrimmage, about a six yard gain. Bring up about a fourth and nine. Offense going nowhere, of course, here for Grand Oaks. Number 14, Tristan Browse was on that reception, by the way. Oh, wow. And Okay, so now coming up on the fourth down, Grand Oaks will take their second timeout, about a fourth and nine, needing to convert this fourth down. a play of the game contender right here. See just what Grand Oaks dials up. Hope we're through, but a late flag does come in. Grand Oaks, are they going to be bailed out here by that flag? They just might be. Two Grand Oaks defenders on the intended man, that was Farrakhan in the end zone. Obviously a massive call, depending on the direction this goes in. Hasn't been moved yet, waiting on an official call from the official. That is a very tremendous gift to the Grizzlies there, and they need to take advantage. Moved up to the five yard line now. Clock stops as a result, of course. 414 on the game clock. Ian Conroe had that well covered. That is for sure a second life token there for Grizzlies. Like you said, they need to take advantage of it. We hand off to high up the middle. He's going to have the touchdown. Rumbles in. Touchdown, Grand Oaks. And great job by the Grizzly line creating the space for high to just kind of carry it right into the end zone there with minimal fuss. And as a result, we're going to have ourselves a finish here. Conroe High, 41. Grand Oaks 34 pending the PAT here. Four minutes, 10 seconds left in the game. Max Singet on for the PAT for the Grizzlies. Been perfect kicking here so far tonight. Good snap. And a good kick right down the middle. 
sophomore Max Ingett making no mistake on that. And as a result, six point ball game, 41-35, Conroe leading. Ian Zach, we talked a minute ago when they were facing a third and 16, not entirely sure if it was gonna happen, but we said, you know, if Grand Oak scores here, you know, do you kick it on side given the way Conroe's moved the ball here tonight? And I mean, four minutes, I mean, it's a fair amount of time. I mean, you could kick it, but we've seen the kick returns. They've been kind of doing that deep little pooch for most of the night. So why not? I mean, why not try an onside? Yeah, you know, for Grand Oaks right here, it's really a question is of how successful do you feel you can stop Garlock? I mean, Garlock has been so good tonight for Connor with the passing game. It's the question of, do you see if you can pull out one more stop for him, or do you try and get a little risky with it and attempt to not even let him touch the ball? Looks like Conroe is going to have their return team up. They are showing respect to the, the onside threat here. Looks like Grand Oaks is lining up, showing kind of that sort of look. Here it comes. Oh, it's going to throw through there off a Conroe defender. Grand Oaks has it. They recover it. Look to hit off of a leg of a Conroe uh, coverage man, and Grand Oaks is going to recover that football. Ball seems to just go right through the legs of a Conroe player, and Grand Oaks will take the ball on the 44-yard line. Have a brief stop in action here on the field, but obviously a massive turn of events there with that recovered kick. And again, four minutes left, Grand Oaks trailing by six. Don't go anywhere. As always, we have to pay homage to the trainers. They do such a good job keeping the players healthy and keeping people safe down on the field. Unsung heroes that are part of the action every day with these players. Not sure they, they'll, they can ever get the respect they deserve for the job that they do, the hours they put in. And with that dramatic turn of events there on the onside, Grand Oaks gonna take over possession on the Conroe High 45 yard line. Four minutes, seven seconds left in the game. Trailing by six, here we go. There's High up the middle. Try and rumble off of tackles. Gonna gain a few yards there. Starting to feel very spoiled up here in this booth after the game I got to witness last week in the 44-41 game between Conroe and Oak Ridge. And here I am again with the Tigers and once again in a high scoring, thrilling game coming right down to the end. Second and seven, three and a half minutes left in the game. Smith over the middle. Is he able to hang on? No, gonna be incomplete. Intended man was uh, Sean Veer, senior. Third and seven now, 3.24 on the clock. Here's the third and seven play. Heavy pressure, Conroe. Smith just has to do what he can there. Not gonna have enough for the first down. Gains a couple of yards. Gonna bring up a fourth 
And about four or five. The fourth and four. Or Grizzly offense going nowhere. Quick lead of the line as always. Big man in the flat. Can he come up with the catch? Helmet rolls off. They're going to mark him right at the first down. He has it. Loses his helmet in the process. That's Barracon, the ever-present freshman this second half, making plays for the Grizzlies. None bigger than that one on a fourth down. Massive. Yeah, they, they really needed that conversion. And so, still with time against them, just a six-point game. Well, really, at this point, you can just kind of take your time, make sure you score here. Yep, that's always the name of the game. Get in the end zone in whatever way possible. You timeout on the field here. As the officials come in. Trainers come out with water. Well, Grand Oaks may not be designed to play from behind with the kind of system they run. They have not given up here at all tonight. Again, I think back to that massive kick return they had. Just when Conroe had put some distance on the scoreboard, it was 31-14 at that point. And then instant response from the Grizzlies on that kick return by the sophomore Tristan Frazier, actually the backup quarterback, but gets to use his speed as a kick returner while he's not able to play quarterback um, with Jacob Smith kind of leading the offense. But yeah, that was just a massive moment. And I think Grand Oaks being in this football game is can be directly attributed to that kick return. Obviously, if they find a way to go on and win this game, definitely look back very fondly on that moment. Still work to do here, 2.52 on the clock. First down play. And roll left, heavy pressure. He's gonna go down and the ball comes out. Maybe tried to do a little bit too much there, try and spin out of trouble, but the pressure was so heavy. Massive play by the Conroe Tiger defense. Yeah, it looked like Smith there was just trying to get off one of those, another one of those little flicks while he was going down, but couldn't see that there were just a bunch of Conroe defenders right in front of him. And with that, it will be called a fumble, and Conroe will take the ball at the 50-yard line. Yeah, and just Conroe bringing one more man than Grand Oaks can block up front there. So as soon as the quarterback turned around, that free man was coming right at him, applying heavy pressure. Massive, massive turnover, and now Garlock finally able to get back on the field here. If you're Conroe now, it's just all about, you know, killing that time. Kill the time. Grand Oaks ears pinned back on that one. Going to stop that one in the backfield for a two-yard loss. Well, I say kill the time. You also are going to need a first down or two. Still with the two and a half minutes left, you need to convert. Yep, with the style of offense and the capability that Garlock has and that Conroe has with the plays they run, you can go for the jugular here as well and just be who you are. If you identify a crack in the armor in the Grand Oaks defense, take that opportunity and finally kind of drive the nail in on this one if you can. Yeah, it's actually kind of hard because with them being such a passing offense, the one risk of passing when you're trying to chew time is if it's incomplete, the clock stops. So party wants to run, but if you're best at, the th at throwing, you gotta find the happy meeting. Four receivers here for Garlock, trips up top. Gonna fake the pitch and keep the ball up the middle on the, the run. Get back to the original line of scrimmage for just a couple of yards, so bring up third and 10. We're at a minute 50 and counting left in the game. No timeouts left for Conroe High. No timeouts left for Grand Oaks. Got 18 on the play clock here. Conroe in no rush. If Conroe doesn't pull it off, though, a good punt really could pin back 
Grand Oaks in their red zone. Now to the flat, great caught ball is a little bit low on the throw and that's where he's gonna have the first down and more up the sideline. That should be enough to salt the game away. There is a flag that comes in though, however, towards the end of that, we'll see what that's about. Guessing either a hold on the receiver or a block in the back as they do bring the chains back. And if the result of the foul is still enough to move the chains, Spot foul. Second will still be third down. It's Grand Oaks. Still a little bit of life. A chip and a chair is the poker analogy, and that's where they're at right now. Down to a chip and a chair left. It's a third and four for Garlock and the Tigers. Garlock, heavy pressure, gets the screen off. It's going to be stopped short, though. Again, no way for Grand Oaks to stop the clock. The clock's going to run down quite a bit before Conroe has to do anything with this. Play clock just started, so it's 25 seconds. Eight second difference between the play clock and the game clock right now. Five seconds left to run the play. See if they just take the penalty. Yeah, it looks like they're going to take the penalty here, get it down to what it seems to be 28 seconds left, and give their punter a little bit more room to try and get a punt pinned down. Once again, my name is Jeremy McGrill here with Zach Berger tonight, and we thank you for joining us for another delightful evening of football here under the Thursday night lights here at Wood Forest Bank Stadium on this Conroe ISD live stream. Just like to take a minute to thank all the crew that make this happen, our show control, all of our moving cameras down on the field to help bring you all these images and great production that you get to see in all these games. Such a fortunate thing for Conroe ISD to have, and we thank you for joining us. Here tonight, we've still got a little bit more football left before we close the book on this game. Conroe High leading 41-35, punting away to Grand Oaks, 28 seconds left. See what drama may be left in store. Bruce Granados going to hold on to that punt for as long as he possibly can. little clever gamesmanship there and a great punt. It's going to be downed around the 15-yard line. So only 85 yards to go for Grand Oaks. Yeah, really smart there. I mean, Grand Oaks really didn't bring any pressure to the punter, so he just held on to it as long as he could. So Grizzlies going to be, it uh, looks like, about their 15-yard line, 16 seconds left. And, you know, you never know. With guys like Zver, just any play can happen. Yeah, it's like you wonder if... Bruce Granados gave any thought to just continuing to hold on to that punt there because, yeah, he was literally under no pressure at all. Yeah. I wonder if he thought about, oh, I'll just run around with it for a little bit. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can sink for a couple yards. Yep, you're quickly to the line, Grand Oaks. What do they have left? Heavy pressure. And that's going to do it. There's a flag that comes in, though. What is that going to do? Will we have one more play left, or is that going to be it? Looked like Smith actually, there was a fumble on the play. Was ball definitely out. 
Looks like they're saying it might be a holding on the offense. It's recovered by his own man. Funny enough, a penalty on them actually gives them one more life, being able to stop the clock now. So I'm not familiar enough to know the rules at this stage of the game, but I wonder if there might be a, a kind of a runoff if the foul is against Grand Oaks and maybe the game over as a result because you wouldn't think that an offensive hold would give the offense one more chance, but maybe it does. We'll see. I wish I'd read that deep in the rule book, but I haven't. Well, as you said, people are waiting on the rules, so Grand Oaks is ready and lined up for whatever the call is. Do they have a 95 yard play in the playbook here? Oh yeah, the classic 95 yard, you know, pass, right? We always yeah. draw that so up. you were right, Zach, that hold actually gives them another chance. Conroe playing very deep, expecting the long ball. Yep, they did run the clock there, so they spiked it. So they can stop it and try and find some kind of play. And you wonder if there's a hook and ladder type situation on here or just a, yeah, rugby style multiple lateral situation. We'll see what they come up with. Hey, whatever can work real quick to try and make a little magic happen. Yeah, there's really not much in the book for a 95 yard situation. Honestly, the only logical thing maybe is try and get one of those wheel routes to work again and see if he can make it up this. Conroe High Defenders back deep. Obviously prevent situation entirely. Spears going to be the first man with his hands on the ball, but got no one near him when he catches it. Ball game over. Conroe High is going to hang on for the 41-35 win over Grand Oaks and move to 2-0. on the season in district play. Officials having a discussion here before we jump away entirely. And we'll have yet one more play. Don't go away. It's, it's not over. It's not over. If Grand Oaks buying opportunity somehow here at the very end of this game. Unless a miracle does happen, like you said, though, Conroe will move to 2-0, and, and the Grizzlies will move to 0-2. Yes, Conroe, you can hold on to this win here, taking a massive step towards the playoffs. Back-to-back 40-point -back game for that Conroe offense now. Flushed out pressure. See if there's anybody whatsoever down the field. It's caught, but yeah, unable to get the lateral off, and that will be the end of the game. Phenomenal display of competitiveness by both sides. Again, Conroe High moving to 2-0 on the season. Grand Oaks 0-2 in district. Thank you for joining us tonight on this Conroe ISD live stream. Have a good night.